my man, Corey Quinn. Corey, how you doing? Not dead yet. Way to oversell it. You always want to set expectations low, and then people's surprises are all pleasant. If you overpromise, you become an enterprise software vendor. It's only because I love you, baby. But you know, I'm uh, I'm gonna kick it over to you. I'm gonna sit here and try not to spit my coffee out. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Uh, I want to start off by apologizing to basically everyone because there's been a misunderstanding. When people heard I was going to be reading mean tweets, they thought that. I was going to be reading the nasty things that people had said to me on Twitter, but that's not what this talk is going to be about. The reason behind that is that most of you aren't particularly creative, and reading the nonsense that you folks send me when you're trying to be both mean and funny at the same time is both disappointing as well as kind of sad. So if I spotlight the small handful of genuinely mean things that people have said to me, I'll be reinforcing the exact wrong behavior, plus giving some of the worst people in the world some unneeded publicity. And I don't think we need more of Larry Ellison taking time to shit post on my timeline. So instead, what I'm going to inflict upon you for the next yeah, 15 minutes is mean tweets that I've written. Uh, a few of them I've sent before, but most of them have just been polluting my drafts folder because either the timing wasn't right or I thought at the time that they were going to be far too mean. Now that the world is locked inside during an isolating pandemic, it seemed like the right time for me to indulge my absolute worst instincts by lashing out. Now, the reason that most of these didn't get sent is because contrary to what folks may believe, there are rules to my snark. I don't punch down, I punch up. So I only ever make fun of large companies. It's why I own Twitter for pets.com. I needed a fake startup that I can make fun of instead of crapping on people's hard work. I also don't make fun of people because even if the person themselves is a complete dumpster goblin, they presumably have friends and family that care about them to would be hurt or take offense on their behalf. That does, of course, mean that Oracle co-founder Larry Ellison is fair game because he has no friends or family who care about him at all. So who would be left to be offended? Uh, one last thing before I dive in. There aren't going to be any slides this time, just my smiling face, because video is hard and screen sharing isn't really that awesome on my computer, just because of the truly excessive amounts of Kubernetes erotic fan fiction that are scattered across all of my different browser tabs. I also basically be reading my slides to you, and frankly, that sort of thing isn't appropriate for any kind of conference talk that isn't an Oracle open world keynote. But what I'm going to do instead in an experimental test is live tweet my own talk as I go in a thread. If you're on Twitter, you can follow along at Quinny Pig. That's Q-U-I-N-N-Y Pig. So now, without further ado, we begin with mean tweets that I have written. IBM has had two brand name projects in the past century, Watson and the Holocaust. I don't think that IBM Cloud is shaping up to be the third. Kubernetes solves a bunch of different business problems, according to folks who think which container runtime do I use is a business problem. The AWS partners sticking up for AWS's behavior in the open source world feels kind of like AWS trotting out hostages who are all currently severely suffering from Stockholm Syndrome. They say that the best characters never truly develop. If that were true, then why do I have to instinctively mute the folks who keep telling me that serverless runs on servers? If you bill yourself as a full stack developer in your resume, you're going to hate the interview questions I ask you about device drivers. If you think Google is condescending, wait until you see the bill you get when you exceed the AWS free tier. You should have been smarter. Some people tell me I'm condescending. That means I talk down to people. I'm so annoyed by the internal AWS pronunciation of AMI that I've started countering with my own pronunciations of PostgreSQL, Oppie, and GiraffeDB. Ever notice that if you want to get hired at AWS, you've got to implement quicksort on the whiteboard, but absolutely none of their services are ever sorted in anything that even remotely approaches logical order? 
Given Elastic's complete reversal on maintaining goodwill with their community via lawsuits, I'm starting to view their CEO, Shay Bannon, as a dollar store brand Larry Ellison, only without the redeeming parts. Slack sure does run their gums an awful lot about how to work remotely for a company that was entirely anti-remote themselves until they were forced to change that. Azure's had a lot of capacity shortfalls lately because they're as surprised as anyone that companies took the Microsoft Cloud seriously. If all you ever do is pivot, eventually all you're capable of doing is sitting and spinning. It feels mean to tag Pivotal in this tweet, but I'm still going to do it. COVID-19 relief is great and all, but I hope Sneak or Snike or Snake embezzles at least a bit of money from the all from this conference and uses it to buy a vowel so I can figure out how the hell their name is pronounced. You used to be able to win free drinks by answering ridiculous trivia questions correctly. Now, if you answer the ridiculous trivia correctly, you get a job offer at Google. It's called serverless because AWS Legal shot down its original name of screw you, build it your damn self. Amazon Chime is globally federated, which means that Amazon Chime users can talk to other Amazon Chime users from different companies. This is a forward-looking feature that anticipates a day when Amazon Chime gets a second paying customer. Watching AWS and Azure have benchmark wars is like watching two nerds have the world's most ineffective playground slap fight over which nerd is going to get to ask the teacher to the school dance. The longer this pandemic drags on, the better the technology decision companies are going to make. This is entirely due to the lack of executive exposure to enterprise software ads in airports. The folks at giant ad tech companies are going so stir crazy right now that they're volunteering to build and release location tracking technology for free. Junkie needs their fix. The entire point of the AWS marketplace is to do an end run around your company's shitty procurement department. The best part is that any company name in the world could conceivably be an AWS service name. So procurement is never going to catch on to that particular trick. AWS CEO Andy Jassy didn't spring fully formed into this world from the forehead of some god. In fact, he started off in Amazon marketing. That's right. He's the original systems manager, marketing manager. VMware remains the payday lender of technical debt. There are kind, empathetic, warm and inspirational people who work at Oracle. HR is trying to root them out as fast as they can. If you ever want to sabotage AWS, all you have to do is give them a puppy and then tell them to name it. Six more months of no feature releases coming up. It's going to be a while before tech conferences come back in person as an event people go to. Other than Pete Cheslock's lightning talk about the VASA, I can't think of any other talks I'd be willing to risk my life to attend in person. IBM bought Red Hat because that's what all the cool kids are into these days. Someday we're going to have to find better phrasing for this than IBM found dead on the toilet straining for relevance. Maybe it's already happened. IBM is one of those companies that could go out of business tomorrow, and some of its divisions wouldn't hear about it for another five years. I'm reading Microsoft's 10K filing with the SEC, and I can't find the risk factor of people might take us seriously when we call ourselves a hyperscale public cloud so Azure gets full. The first big in-person tech conference after this pandemic subsides will mostly be attended by staff that the C-suite deems the most expendable. Please prove me wrong. Uh, sorry, badge scanning attack interns. You're the tribute. Raise your hand if you have a friend who works for Apple. I obviously can't see you, but that's okay because nobody has a friend who works for Apple. We instead used to have friends who went to go work for Apple, and then we just kind of lost touch with them. 
Amazon is fanatically devoted to diversity. True, their executive leadership, or S team, and this is true, has fewer women on it than guys named Jeff, but at least their APIs are incredibly diverse between different AWS services. If you think you're past your prime and no longer attractive to anyone, try becoming an Oracle customer. Nobody has ever been more interested in screwing you. It's a mystery why Zoom is what everyone's using to chat instead of Google's offerings of Hangouts Chat, Hangouts Meet, Google Talk, Huddle, Allo, Hangouts, Duo, Buzz, Wave, Google Voice, Messages, Spaces, or this year's version, Google Chat. The most savage attack ad I think I've ever seen was that time that Zoom bought everyone a month of WebEx and suggested they use it. It feels like we fell into a time warp into the distant past over the past year. Suddenly, everyone's talking about COBOL, there's a global plague, and Matt Stratton went to work for Red Hat. One of the real victims of this pandemic is J. Paul Reed, because air travel is way down, and now he's going to have nothing to give conference talks about. I make an awful lot of jokes about using Route 53 as a database. For the record, Route 53 is not a database, but then again, neither is Redis. When I first started my company, I was worried that AWS would fix the bills and then drive me out of business super quickly. Four years in, I'm now worried that they never will. Every day, I check the list of canceled things in the vain hope that Kubernetes is on it. At moments like this, I wonder what world we'd live in if more of the greatest minds of our generation had gone into medicine instead of trying to figure out how to get people to click more ads. Where do you think you'll be when a COVID-19 vaccine is announced? If you're a VC, you'll probably be writing a self-congratulatory medium post. An awful lot of folks are spending eight grand on video and audio equipment without stopping to think whether anyone cares what they have to say in the first place. If I ever need to look busy in an office ever again, I'm going to install a Windows 95 virtual machine, fire up disk defragmenter, and tell my boss I'm rebalancing Kubernetes workloads in the data center. I'm repurposing conference t-shirts to make masks, but there are some exceptions. Look, I'm not saying I'd rather die than wear a Splunk mask, just that I'd have to think about it for a minute first. The climate right now is starting to recover as carbon emissions are way down across the board. People aren't driving, plus SoftBank has stopped shoveling money into the dumpster volcano that is WeWork. Not to spoil things for anyone, but if you watch until the end of Netflix, the boss is super hard. To be very clear, because I do get questions about this, I'm not saying that Larry Ellison would strangle a puppy to death just to watch it suffer. I'm saying he already did, and that puppy's name was Sun Microsystems. It says something really messed up at a profound level about our society, that essential workers is just a rebranding of people without health insurance. If you have no idea what either of these two things are, you'd think that the Amazon Global Accelerator and the Microsoft Reactor were in a race to see which could destroy the planet first. Also, nobody knows what the hell either of those two things are. Burning Man is canceled this year, proving that if you look hard enough, there really is a silver lining to everything. The nutters have started talking about how 5G is a conspiracy that's killing people and causing the coronavirus. And the most ridiculous thing about that entire spiel is that the government would be that competent at doing anything. The Super Bowl, GDPR, and COVID-19 have one thing in common. Unfortunately, that one thing is serve as an excuse for that company you bought a hinge from in 2008 to email you again. AMI versus AMI, JSON versus YAML, serverless versus containers. 
tabs versus spaces, Vim versus Emacs, no matter where you stand on these issues, we can all agree on one thing. It's better to scream at strangers about them than it is to do our actual jobs. That concludes me cleaning out my Twitter drafts folder for the past quarter. Now, perhaps you didn't find any of those tweets funny. Perhaps you were a fool. Jeff, do we have any questions? We do have one question uh, from a guy by the name of Maddie. My question for Corey is, what advice do you have to be more funny on Twitter? That is a great question uh, because the problem, honestly, first, uh, step one, Matt, you need this advice. Secondly, (laughs) in fairness, you're pretty good at this one, but a lot of folks conflate being funny with being mean and crapping on things. And you can do that, but it's not an either or. Uh, the short answer is, I don't know. I have a personality defect that manifests itself this way. Was that the you, only question, hopefully, or were there actually uh, useful ones in there? Yeah, no, that's the only question we've got. Let me check the other uh, the other channel. Uh, Excellent. <laughs> but <laughs> I enjoyed it. I, I have to say, I think the most savage was, of course, the <laughs> VMware, the payday lenders, <laughs> technical oh, debt. Oh, yeah, of course it was. <laughs> But one thing I want to point out, though, too, is that these these are rough times in seriousness. Uh, please take care of yourself and, and be kind to one another. The fact is that one day we're going to talk to one another about how we all made this through this. But that's only because the we is the people who did, not the people who didn't. So please stay safe. I'm Corey Stop Quinn. You. And if you enjoyed this talk, you can find me at lastweekinaws.com. If you didn't enjoy this talk, my name is Matt Stratton. And because I work for Red Hat, <laughs> I'm now only reachable via Telegram and fax. Uh, we did have one other last minute uh, uh, question come through. So why does Twitter have drafts? You don't just tweet it as it pops into your head. <laughs> uh, there are some things where, ooh, I could do that. But that means if I send it, I'm going to get letters. So if I wind up discarding it for later, uh, the things that are too edgy or not quite appropriate, well, that's what I, it turns out you can basically shit post your way an entire talk just by reading the discard pile. <laughs> so a clarification on Matt's question, uh, it was more about turning that question around for you. How do you get more funny on Twitter? Oh, I see. At that point, uh, yeah, it's. I understand my humor is not for everyone, especially because I talk about how about technologies that have come out in the last 40 years. But, you know, and there's different strokes for different folks, Matt. It, it happens. All right. Looks like that's the end of the questions. Corey, good time. Really enjoyed it, man. Great time. Thank you, Jeff. All right. Be safe. You too.